All right, makeup geeks, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Marlena, and every Monday we're doing makeup masterclasses where I'm teaching you the nitty gritty into makeup application, but we keep it fun here. There's no snoozing in this class, but grab a drink, grab a snack. We just wanna sit down and have fun while we learn about makeup. So today's topic is a beginner one, but if you feel like you're not a beginner, please still watch because I'm gonna give you some tips that I think you can still walk away with, but this is how to blend eyeshadows for beginners. I'm getting into brushes, the technique, the types of shadows. Why am I dancing like this? Okay, so let's start first with the tools. So the first brush you need is a crease brush. This is a dome shaped brush and it can be stiff or soft. The reason you need this in their collection is because with that dome shape, it fits easily into that crease of the eye. Do you see how I can just really easily blend this back and forth? You can also use it under here to blend out any concealer or maybe any powder that fell down. It's just a great brush to have in your collection. So now let's talk about density of the brushes. If you want something that packs on a lot of color, Pick something that's a bit more dense. When I touch it like this, do you see how it's not moving? When I go to bend it, it's just very dense like this. Now here's the example of a more fluffy one. Do you see how when I push it back, it bends quite a bit? It flares out a lot. It's just very soft and fluffy. That's gonna give you- Did I seriously just stab my eye with a makeup brush while teaching a class? Yes, yes I did. Poke myself in the eye. That's gonna give you a very light application, something very soft and fluffy, just very easy. So if you're just starting out and you're intimidated by makeup, get one that's a lot more fluffy, it flares out, it doesn't feel so dense. When you feel it, it's just very soft. That's gonna give you a very light application of color and then you can always build on it as you go. Next up is the eyelid brush. Now this is a generally a flat brush that you can pack on color on the lid. So here's an example of a flat brush. Do you see how it's thin on this side and it's wide and skinny? This works great for the lid because you can tap it like this to pack on color. And then when you go to blend color out, you just do this tapping motion like this. Last one is a small dome brush. This is a dome shaped brush that works great for under the lower lash line or applying color to the outer V of the eye. So here's the small dome brush. Do you see how it's very small? This works great for applying color here under the lower lash line. If I wanna darken the outer part of the eye, it's small enough to get into that crevice of the eye and I could just do little circle motions like this. I can sweep it sideways to blend out that color. Or if I want to pop a little color here on the inner tear duct, I just swipe it like this to get in that little corner of the eye. One last tip is the smaller and the more dense a brush is, the more it's gonna pack on color. The larger the larger a brush is, the more fluffy and light the application is. So definitely have a good variety of small and dense and lighter and fluffier brushes to get the blend that you want. Now let's talk about the eyeshadows. This is where most people get tripped up of what eyeshadows do I need? Why is my look muddy? I can't blend. You wanna choose at least three shadows that range from light to dark. Let me show you some examples. So the first one I have here, I have a light, a medium, and a dark. Do you see how they're all neutral browns if I want an all brown look? But they vary in how dark they are. This is so important for blending because if I apply a dark color like this and I wanna blend it out, I need something that's a little bit lighter than it that can help blend this out. If I try to blend this color with this, it's gonna be really hard to blend. It's gonna get muddy and patchy. Let me show you the swatches of these two. Do you see how dark and light they are? So here's the two colors side by side, a dark brown and a super light brown. What happens when I try to blend the two? There's not a medium shade in here to help blend between the light and the dark. So I can keep blending over this with my finger or brush multiple times, but you're still gonna see that harsh line. So that's where you wanna introduce a medium color like this. But if I start to apply this in between, the two. It's going to help transition between them. Hopefully that makes sense. But let me show you some examples of color stories that you can do that can vary from light to dark. So here I have some browns, grays, and pinks. They don't have to be in the same color story. I have a cool, I have a warm, I have a pink. But do you see how it's ranging from light, medium, medium, dark to dark? That's a good color story to put together for blending. Here's another example of some in a warm story. So if you like a nice orangey kind of rusty look, this works, but I have a good variety from light, medium to dark. Here's another one if you like greens thrown in there. These are totally different colors, greens and browns, but it works because I'm going from light, medium to dark. Now let's talk about the techniques. 
Make sure to lay down a layer of powder before you go to blend any eyeshadow. This is so that the eyeshadows don't stick to the lid if there's any oil or if your primer is tacky at all. All you have to do is take an eyeshadow that's close to your skin and that dome brush that we talked about earlier and you just dust this all over the lid. And what this does is it just helps prep the canvas and make blending easier. Now for the crease, what I'm gonna do is take that dome brush and I'm gonna put it right here in the crease and I do what I call windshield wiper motion where it goes back and forth, back and forth with that dome shape brush. That's how you're going to blend it to get that soft application of color. Now for the lid, I wanna go in with that flat brush here. The reason is, is that your lid can tend to be flat. It's easier to pack on color. I'm gonna test it with these two colors, an orange and a red. And what I like to do is just pack the color on first. We'll put this on the inner half. And then I wipe off that brush. I always have my towel on my lap, wipe it off. This was Chickadee, now I'm going with Brick House. Pack this on the lid. See how I'm doing a padding motion like this on the outer lid. If I wanna blend these two colors together, don't pick up any more color. And all I'm going to do is just pat next to it like this. Do you see how I'm patting over that orange? And if that line is still too harsh, I can then go back in with the orange and then start coming over into the red, doing this patting motion like this to try to blend out that line. Do you see how that orange blended really nicely into that red? Cause I just kept going back and forth and patting side by side to get that rid of that line. Now for the lower lash line, this is where I go in with that a lot smaller brush. You're gonna do kind of the same windshield wiper motion where you're going to sweep it side by side like this. And just keep sweep, sweep, sweep side by side, just like that. If you feel like it's still harsh under here, you could take the larger crease brush, dry, no color on it, and you can sweep right under that to kind of erase some color and blend it out to be softer. You guys like how I have one eye dot? I look crazy on camera. So the order of eyeshadows, does it matter? Do I put the light one first, the dark one? Do I start with the crease, whatever? The placement doesn't matter, but I personally like applying my medium color first. So that way the dark color doesn't muddy it up. The light color doesn't get washed away when I put darker colors on it. I just find that putting the medium color down first makes it easier for the everything else to blend. So if I was doing this color combo here, here's my light, my medium, my dark. If I'm gonna put this here in the crease, I lay that first color down, I'm blending it back and forth, windshield wiper motion. And then because there's a harsh line up in here, then I go in with the lightest shade. So that is this one creme brulee and I go above it and I do that same motion, the windshield wiper, but I'm gonna come up here to the brow to kind of blend everything out. Do you see how it's softening everything because I put the medium color first? And then I like to go in with the dark color. I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush like this and say I want the dark color to be out here on the corner of my eye. So I can start it here. And because that medium color is already put down, I don't have to worry about the dark color kind of overtaking the whole eye. Now, if you got a little messy down here, don't worry about it. Keep a sponge on hand. You can just kind of wipe it away. So let's put down this darker shade here, that brick house again. I'm gonna dust this all over the lid for just a smoky eye. And let me show you how I'm gonna get a smooth transition by choosing the right depth of color from light to dark. So here's that deep red color. If I try to go in with the lightest shade and blend it out, let me show you what happens. It doesn't blend the harsh line because there's too much of a difference between how deep this color is and this one. I need something in between that's not so dark or light, just a medium shade, one of these two. So let's apply this orange, this is Chickadee. Now let's apply this in the crease. Do you see how it's blending out that harsh line a little bit better because it's a medium shade working with a dark. And now that we have our dark and our medium on there, then I can go in with my lighter shade and blend up here. So there's a gradation going from dark to light. So hopefully this helps you all with your eyeshadow blending. At the end of the day, makeup is fun and it's meant to just wash off and put it on the next day. The whole point of makeup is just to have fun with it, experiment with color, and just sit down and have a great time creating a beautiful look. If you all like these makeup masterclasses, don't forget to go to the Makeup Geek site. I offer online classes where you have an online portal you can connect with other students. There's a class booklet we mail to you. It's a full color pamphlet that has illustrations and colored examples and great tips in there. There's 
There's also a quiz, a review. It's an actual class you all. So if you want to take some more in-depth classes, go to makeabgeek.com and click on the top link that says master classes. I hope this was fun for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next Monday for another makeup masterclass.